So, continuing here with del dot b equal to 0 as one of the additional laws that we have written, these two divergence laws are called as Gauss's law for electric fields and Gauss's law for magnetic fields. Gauss's law for electric field tells you that the source of the d field is the charge and Gauss's law for magnetic field you know in the form of del dot b equal to 0 tells you that there is actually no source because you cannot isolate a magnetic charge. Then we are left with one of the most important laws you know which led to the combination or which led to the you know synchronization between or kind of interrelationship between electricity and magnetism and this law is called as Faraday's law. Faraday's law was you know is a very interesting law. It tells you that if I have a conducting path you know or a conducting loop and let me open up a you know small piece of here. So, I open this conductor path here. So, this is a conductor okay, and then I let these two terminals go out there. And if I take a magnet, okay, maybe the north pole is going here and then the south pole of the magnet is here and if I move this magnet vigorously, right? so if I move this magnet vigorously, then I actually see that there will be a EMF generated. Now, it might not make so much sense to you unless you understand what an EMF is. EMF was a you know a very general term even today that is used to denote what is called as electromotive force. Okay. It is the force which actually moves the charges around in a closed path is what we uh, you know we had written or we had uh, talk uh, people had defined and this EMF is related to the electric field. How is it EMF related to the electric field? So, we relate this EMF you know which I am denoting by this quantity do not worry what that quantity is. If I take a particular you know closed path or you know take a path then over that path whatever the line integral of electric field that I am going to obtain is what by definition is this particular quantity V. Okay. If V is equal to 0 usually V equal to 0 if I were to go over a complete loop okay, because you know integral of E dot dl will be equal to 0 as electric field is usually in a static case when things are not varying with respect to time then this law tells you or this particular thing tells you that the emf developed around a closed path would be equal to zero that is you imagine that there is a charge here and these are the electric field lines that are there around it and if you take this path which is shown in this uh, blue path you are not doing any work as you move along this arc because everywhere the electric field will be perpendicular. But when you move along the electric field then work will be done by the charge for you and then when you move against the charge work has to be done by you on the charge. But the contribution of these two would be exactly equal and they would cancel out and essentially what you obtain is integral of E dot dl equal to 0. Okay. So, what Faraday discovered was that this quantity E dot dl would not be equal to 0, there will be a non-zero EMF generated okay, provided there is a changing magnetic field. In fact, he called it as changing magnetic flux linkage. Okay. There is a certain flux linking to this circuit and if this flux linkage to this circuit is changing with respect to time, then there will be a certain EMF induced. So, in the modern vector notation, you write this as integral of E dot dl okay, is equal to minus d psi by dt. Okay. What is this d psi or d psi m? Psi m is the magnetic flux density. Okay. It is related to the amount of magnetic field or the magnetic flux that is changing linked to a particular circuit and the time rate of this change is what is given by the flux. So, in fact, the equation should be written not in this way but it should be written in this way to bring out the concept clearly. It says that the known EMF around a closed path, all the known sources if you were to add, then the total EMF around a closed path would be equal to 0. Okay. So, one portion is coming from this E dot dl and the corresponding portion is coming from d psi m by dt. This is the mathematical way of thinking about it, but what Faraday said is that if I take you know one conducting path or just take a loop and if I change the magnetic field in you know uh, with respect to or the magnetic flux associated with respect to that particular loop with respect to time, then there will be an EMF induced which you can tap and then use. Okay. This is of course, the way in which you know most uh, uh, generators work, they change the magnetic field associated with it. The corresponding thing is also true. So, if you were to you know uh, take 
so you can actually do this by two ways right so either you can take a magnet and then move or you keep the magnet fixed and then you take the circuit and then move it around in and around the magnetic uh, pole so in either case you generate the same effect okay and it is most important to note that the source would be minus d psi m by dt so if i move instead of taking this as zero if i write this as integral of e dot dl over a closed path that would be equal to minus d psi m by dt and that minus sign is called as lenz's law so you have totally four charges the corresponding point form for this equation is very simple that is given by the curl operation del cross e is equal to minus d by dt and the magnetic flux is related to the magnetic flux density okay and what is the magnetic flux density so this equation would be d by dt of integral b dot ds okay or you can rewrite this one as integral of del b by del t dot ds where del b by del t is the changing magnetic field so changing magnetic field integrated over the open surface of the contour that is formed by the conductive path will give you the electric field quantity or you know it will tell you what is the electric field quantity so this is a scenario where the electric field around a closed path is equal to zero when it is in the static scenario but when there is a magnetic field linking that particular path changing with respect to time then this integral of e dot dl is not zero there will be a non zero emf generated and the corresponding point form as i was writing is given by minus del by del t okay so this is given by minus del b by del t and this is the faraday's law so finally let me just point out all the laws here okay you have the faraday's law which is curl e equal to minus del b by del t okay please note that e is a function of r and t b is also a function of r and t d is also a function of r and t and h is also a function of r and t ampere's law tells you that curl of h is equal to j the current density del dot d is equal to rho v the source of d field is the volume charge density del dot b is equal to 0 because there is essentially no magnetic flux density okay there is no isolated magnetic charges do not exist so these were the equations which were known at the time of maxwell of course they were not known in this form because vector notation was not invented by j w gibbs until a few years later so all the equations were there in the original partial differential form but by and large the physical interpretation the way th to understand these equations was known by maxwell so then why is is this you know maxwell's equation which which is now considered to be a cornerstone it is considered to be a cornerstone simply because the equations as they exist here are not complete there is a problem with these equations especially the problem with this ampere's law so what maxwell did was that he introduced a term in which just as changing magnetic flux would induce what is called as electric field okay or you know the emf changing electric flux density which is del d by del t with respect to time would induce what is called as magnetomotive force just as you defined integral of e dot dl over a path as the emf right so you define this one as the emf uh, integral of e dot dl you could similarly define the mmf as integral of h dot dl and what ampere said in the sense was that the source of mmf is always the conductive current and it turned out that it is not so because if you take a capacitor there is no way there is a current in this if it is an ideal capacitor so then what is happening maxwell reasoned that something else was happening and that something else is what he called as displacement current and then he put this one into the equation and then completed this set so they were all lying separately along with this vacuum or this lacune maxwell brought everything together and we will now study the ramifications of these equations in the remainder of the course thank you very much